All right, welcome everyone to another top five tip video. So today we're going to be focusing on creating level 200 and level 210 characters, either for Legion or for Link skills. So these will be my favorite tips in terms of things that I've done across uh, creating characters. And uh, yeah, if you've got any you'd like to recommend, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. Tip number one is Hauntel and Zakam runs. So the beauty of bossing in MapleStory is that you are not limited to one character to boss on. With the update to the boss queue system, you are able to teleport to both of these bosses within seconds as long as you've completed the pre-quests. Grab an EXP coupon along the way from the Legion store and find a rune if you're lucky and head to Zakam first and then to Hauntel. If you do both of these on a daily basis across multiple characters, you'll see your mule characters climbing up the level ranks in no time. Tip number two is Monster Park Runs. Unfortunately, this is something you can only do twice for free or a further five times if you purchase tickets from either the reward shop in the cash shop in non-reboot world or with Meso from the cash shop if you're in reboot world. This is account wide, so you can only do it a total of seven times per day in the split that I just mentioned. Regardless, this is a major benefit to any character you are training from level 105 or above. If you're not needing to do the 7 day Monster Parker medal on your main character, I would highly recommend doing at least 2 free runs per day. Pair them up with a character that you're doing Horntail and Zakamon, and you'll see your character fly up in levels. As of recording this video, we currently have the Neo Terra Burning Plus event running in Global Maple Story. Use these events to your advantage. This event comes out fairly regularly. So you have the opportunity to burn two characters, which level at a faster rate than normal. You can gain an additional two levels per level up, meaning you can create a level 200 character much faster than usual. They've added in perks each time so that you benefit from pushing your character beyond level 200 as well. So if you go up to level 210 or to 220, you get some nice rewards along the way. You also have access to the burning world, which allows you to create and transfer six characters to any world other than the reboot world. In Burning World, you see additional stats which you wouldn't otherwise gain, and that's a great way to get a number of characters up very quickly. Tip number four is Vanishing Journey Symbols. So this tip is a bit more relevant for those of you who have progressed further into the mid-game. The perk of leveling up a main character to 250 and progressing through Arcane River is that the amount of daily quests for each area decreases as you unlock more content. By the time you've reached level 250 and gained access to Moonbridge and the Labyrinth of Suffering, your daily quests will be one per area across Arcane River. So this is a great benefit when it comes to leveling up extra symbols for meal characters. My suggestion here is to create a number of level 10 Vanishing Journey symbols and transfer them to your mule character that you are planning on leveling to 210 for its third level link skill. You don't need to worry about doing this for any character that you're only taking to 200, but for anything that's going above 200, this will greatly benefit you when you're first starting out in Vanishing Journey, so you're actually doing damage to these mobs. Tip number five is Empress Gear slash Chaos Root Abyss Gear, Star Force to level 210 and cubed for percent stat. This suggestion is only relevant for non-reboot world players. You can do this in one of two ways. Either you set aside some meso and some cubes and create some star forced and unique or legendary tier pencilar equips for each class with the relevant percent stat. Or you can create individual sets of empress and CRA equips combined for each mule character. I would recommend at least doing 10 star forces on each equip with 3% to 6% stat on each equip. Doing the Empress slash CRA equips will also benefit you in the long term as Star Force levels on each character add up when they're on the Legion board. You can apply a similar principle to Reboot as well, however you'll need to work with the equips that you find along the way unless you've got someone to carry you through Empress and CRA to get this gear as well. But either way, it's a great way of uh, replacing the equips that you get, especially if you're doing a burning character because a lot of those equips expire, so you want to have something there for the long run. So my final thoughts on all of this. Be smart about which class you choose to do when, in regards to Burning World and Terror Burning Plus events. If you don't enjoy playing a particular class, such as say all the Pirates or all the Resistance classes, then you're better off doing a Terror Burning event or Burning World event with them, rather than dragging them through Zakim and Horntail for a few weeks and hating it along the way. I would highly recommend working on the following six classes first, because they will benefit you in the long term for all your other classes. Evan for Rune Duration Increase, Kana for Damage Increase, Demon Avenger for Damage Increase, Mercedes for EXP Increase, Luminous for Enemy Defense Ignore, and Aaron for Combo Kill EXP Boosts. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for reaching the end of this video. 
If you have any other tips you'd like to add, feel free to drop a comment in the comment box below for other players to read. And if you have a suggestion for any other videos you'd like to see, please feel free to drop a suggestion along the way. I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next video. See you later.